This is a screen that was uh, originally uh, made as a fixed standing screen. Um, it was remounted in the 20th century in Japan, um, but we know from the distribution of the figures in the screen that this was a, a, a standing screen. And it's by a man called Chen Xiang, who we know was born in 1628, and this painting is dated 1698. This is the only work we can find by him. We know from his calligraphy and from the form of the signature that he was a court painter. But what's most interesting about this screen is the dilemma that the hero has in the middle of it. The, this figure here on, on horseback is probably a representation of the emperor. He was not allowed to be represented in paintings at this time, but all of the figures are in Ming court um, clothes, um, and although this is in the Qing dynasty. And here he is, along with his concubines and female musicians, off for a day's entertainment. He's either going to go for a picnic, and we have figures down here carrying the picnic, or he's going to go on the hunt. And you see here there's the, the hunting animals and deer uh, with both matchlock muskets and bows and arrows. But this figure here is beckoning to him with his hand over his mouth, saying you really shouldn't be doing this. You should be coming with us and studying with the other scholars that are in this group of trees over here. And we know the scholars, scholars because they're on donkeys. And so this is, the, this is the dilemma. This is the moment in which he's caught in this dilemma as to whether he should go off and follow the scholarly pursuits or go off and enjoy himself with his courtesans hunting. And that's the basic concept of the screen. I mean, it's painted in a Song style, but this was also typical, as you would expect, of, uh, of early Qing court painting. And the writing up there, is that the date and his name? Is the date and his name, yes. I mean, it'd be a, it's a cyclical date, so it can reoccur every 60 years. So, um, but, uh, and there's no rain date, so we can't be certain, but the likelihood is, because of we know the year of his birth, that it would have to be 1698, because if it was 1758, he would be too old. And are there other paintings similar to this? There are other court paintings similar to this, and uh, there are a number of standing screen paintings known. Very few of them are still in their screen, still retained within their screens. Um, mostly they've been taken out and remounted as hanging scrolls. Um, but this is um, an example of uh, one that is still complete. I mean, it's, not, it's not completely in its original form. There's a figure down here on the left-hand corner who is looking off the edge of the screen, which would indicate that when it was remounted in Japan, it was probably trimmed by a centimetre maybe around the edges, um, possibly at the top and bottom as well, but not a, not a huge amount. And this is about the right proportions for a fixed screen. The oddity really about this is not only the subject matter, but also the presence of the fact that we have Western muskets, uh, either matchlocks or flintlocks, I'm not certain, um, which you find certainly in paintings of uh, the Emperor Qinlong, who's a later 18th century emperor, um, in his hunting scenes. But this is quite early for the depiction of, uh, of, of, of muskets at that time, although, of course, they existed. So originally this work would have been standing like this in a room? It would have been standing in a wooden surround with a support on either side in a room, probably with a chair in front of it. Um, and this was to give authority to the figure sitting in the chair in front of it. Much the same way as the thrones are displayed, if you go to the, for the Forbidden City today, you have a five-fold screen behind the throne to give uh, power, glory, to the sitter in front of it. And the same thing would have happened in a rich merchant's house. And this is probably made for a rich merchant in the early Qing. It's painted on what material? It's painted in ink on silk. So we've got different, um, different consistencies of the ink um, being the differences between the darker and lighter, just the amount of ink that is loaded onto the brush when it's painted. Nicholas, can you tell us, for those who don't know yet who you are, a bit about yourself? I'm a dealer who was uh, I've been dealing now since 1976. 
Um, and uh, so this is my 40th year in business. Um, and I deal primarily in Chinese furniture, um, but also in Chinese scholars' objects and related areas. Um, this um, screen uh, I bought from a collection of a man called Ian Wilson in San Francisco, um, along with a number, number of other scholars' objects which are included in this exhibition. Um, and uh, Ian had bought this in Japan, which is why, why it was remounted in Japan. Uh, he passed away last year and I bought the, a large group of his collection. Um, uh, and that's sort of been my business, selling Chinese furniture and scholars' objects to individuals and museums. A, a lot of museums, actually, over the years. <laughs>